Hello and welcome back and today I want to address a very simple subject. Why I believe that Synology will probably never release DSM Disk Station Manager as a standalone software purchase. I was talking to RJ Cormack, you guys might know him in the comments, he's kind of, he's fast becoming my surveillance guru of the commenters in the subscriber base there, but he and I were postulating a conversation about the subject of Synology software and we're not the only ones by the way, a number of you out there Look at Synology's products. They released you know, the DS923, the DS920, some of the beefier DS3622 and XS, and you go, DSM is absolutely the dog's nagels, but at the same time, you feel like Synology play a little safe on their hardware. And you know, like a number of you down there, we were wondering, will Synology ever go down the software only route? Just releasing a license pack, releasing DSM for you to just knock on, because they got real close with virtual DSM, haven't they? Unfortunately, I do genuinely believe that will never, ever, ever, ever happen, probably. And in today's video, I'm going to go through the reasons why I believe that to be the case. And again, maybe you're watching this in the future and Synology, you know, one day after I've made this video, roll out DSM as a software-only purchase. Or maybe Synology themselves are watching this and they have had this meeting time and time and time and again and they've always knocked it down. And I think these are the reasons why DSM will probably never rely uh, arrive as a software purchase. Let's face it, it was always going to come down to the old Wonga, wasn't it? When it comes down to it, Synology, for all of their you know complete solutions and how much they market their products as solutions, not as products for the most part, has to be steadied. It's always going to come down to the price. And when it comes to marketing a software service, if you look at a Cronus, if you look at the lower end of the T, you go to the high end of the T, anywhere in any kind of service-led solution where it comes down to the software, it's really tough to get that model at the right price point. If, now, if we look at the arguments we've had in the past when we'll be comparing cloud versus NAS, it's always come down to a question of when you buy a NAS, you are paying up front. So rather than buying a subscription cloud service where you pay every month, every year, every few years, and it ends up gradually adding up over time, and then later on, you've got all this data and you've got to put it somewhere, with a NAS, you're always buying that money up front for the most part. Now, if Synology were to try and move DSM um, away from a combined hardware software platform purchase and just onto um, you know, a software package, a license to have just a software to run on your own custom server, they the number of hurdles that they would have to deal with internally from their perspective of difficulty and from the end user's perspective of the, how it been you know presented narratively would be very, very tough. How it would be packaged, for example, so just going by my notes there, would they, for example, release a version of DSM for everyone? Would it be the same version that works on some low-end um, Atom or Realtek processor NAS that you knock together uh, with an old uh, Intel Nook, if you want Intel Core, or going for some Raspberry Pi job? Or would it have to be customized so that people at the Enterprise Xeon tier get some fully-fledged solution? So... Are you gonna? Would they have to release one version that suits all those people? I know what you're thinking. Of course not. They can make one for home, one for business, blah blah blah. But it doesn't stop there because then there's going to be people that are using this with hundreds of users, if not thousands, on multi-site deployment. Where there'll be other people working from the home or on a houseboat with two cameras knocking around, and they just wanted something so they can, you know, watch their media. And it's going to come down to do they charge per device, do they charge per person, per organisation, per site? Then. Do they charge annually? Do they charge lifetime? Do they charge for this enterprise level version? Do they go for an uh, an annual subscription service, much like a lot of SaaS and, and PaaS platforms out there that actually produce these solutions and have a home and business tier that are licensed uh, licensed appropriately? And I think for DSM to go down that software route, they would have to present all of these options immediately would it wherever it would be an annual purchase or it would have to be a singular purchase or differentiate those between subjects of groups between home and business or cap groups between 1 to 10 users 10 to 25 etc etc and i think that is probably of all the reasons i'm going to talk about the biggest reason why i think dsm will never make it as a software only purchase from the brand's point of view but also i think narratively from the end user Next up, support. Let's face it, Synology 
when it comes down to it, when you compare it against, say if TrueNAS ended up being some premium paid for feature, it was software led instead of open source. At the moment, Synology frankly have got a little sweet when it comes to hardware support. They know all of the systems that their uh, software is going in. They've tested their software on very specific hardware setup. So yes, when it comes to introducing third party elements that may be on a compatibility list or third party software clients uh, and hardware clients for that matter that are gonna interact with it, there is an element of the unknown. But for the bulk part, when it comes to Synology's tech or just general support teams, be it software or hardware, they know what they're dealing with by the end user's point of view. And that can drastically cut down not only man hours on the job uh, when how much time they're spending interacting with the end user base that needs support, but also the sheer volume of information that has to be taken on board. Because at the moment, yes, presumably members of their team are more versed in different elements of DSM than others, when it comes to providing general support of how the system works in different hardware groups, it's a much smaller binder, if you know what I mean. They've got to read through. Whereas, if DSM started rolling out as a software only purchase, that means the scope and range of hardware components that it would have to be running on and know about for their platform would be enormous. Even if you just, you know, ignored CPU memory and motherboard combos, there is still a whole myriad of different components you'd have to bring into the fold, as well as drivers you'd have to stay on top of to include within DSM for certain things to run, because there are certain external uh, connections, certain profiles for hardware internal components that have very specific drivers that are needed. And if they are rolled into DSM, on hardware they know about, that's a lot easier. The minute you deploy that software on third party hardware, it's gonna be incredibly difficult for them to have a driver for everything. And the expectation from some end users that the software provider should have drivers for their own personal setup would lead to much longer support times and less successful support. Again, this isn't me making excuses for the brand. This is me just saying, from Synology's point of view, if they're weighing up the pros and cons, they probably looked at the sheer cost of support and retooling their support network to provide um, adequate assistance or knowledgeable assistance to a relatively infinite number of support case uh, scenarios. I just don't think it's gonna work out. Arr, piracy, let's face it, that was always gonna be one of the reasons. I think this is one of the big discussions when it comes to any software provider, any client service software, even freeware service, I think, for a, uh, to a point, which rely on ad revenue. Synology, as their system stands, have got a much better handle on piracy. Now, we have to mention it, Exponology. We talked about it before. Um, Exponology is the unofficial and slightly legally dodgy um, variant of DSM, where DSM has been cracked to work on third-party hardware. Again, I wouldn't trust your you know, mission critical data on that platform. There's a reason I don't talk about it here. I have made videos on it in the past and made articles about it on the past, but there's still no denying I don't have full faith in that in, when it comes to critical data. Now, Synology, when they release their updates, they don't just update with every firmware update, big or small, the general you know, stability of the platform, security fixes and improvements to in the individual apps. I am willing to bet my bottom dollar that when they roll out certain updates, they make sure they are encrypted to buggery or they're at least convoluted enough where it's not gonna be that straightforward for people using those unofficial setups to just keep rolling on with the backups. That's why when you look at modded versions of older versions of DSM, the key word is older. They, it takes time to unpack these updates. It's the same, let's face it, with the old days at a pirate bay and games cracking that when patches and cracks come out, they have to be behind the curve when it comes to the updates coming. It's only ever one step ahead. So for Synology to go down that road where they would release DSM as a software platform, that, inc that is gonna open the door substantially more than it stands on their software platform being uh, pirated in some way or form and people navigating away from those paid services, wherever they go, you know, whole thing, annual number of users like if the minute you move the software out of a custom si uh, of a specific system that's built in house, it opens the door substantially to piracy. 
Now this next one's a bit more nebulous and it's about reverse engineering. This is less about consumers, even less I would say about business users using their platform. And this is more about their competitors. It's more about um, other brands or companies that could you know, sprout out of the network um, and start producing their own NAS software and their own NAS solutions or even their major competitors. Not that I would accuse them of it, but let's face it, business is business. We've watched TV and movies for the last 30 and 40 or 50 years. Industrial espionage, more and more. These things exist. And if they released DSM as a software installation, and just as a standard ISO, or even a creating a media installer with just a simple USB, that opens the door to other brands and their engineers reverse engineering a great deal easier outside of the Synology bracket than otherwise. I'm not. To, that isn't to say that things like reverse engineering and, of course, the pirates that we discussed earlier on aren't possible with downloading the .pat file from Synology's own download website. But at the same time, it's going to be substantially easier to do that as a uh, deployable ISO that has to run on a myriad of different virtually unlimited server builds than it is within the Synology closed system there. And I do think a big part of um, Synology's internal discussions about whether they would ever go down the road of a software DSM uh, package purchase, I think a bit of that is not to give their own competitors a bit of a leg up because Synology, as mentioned in the intro, the premium thing about their platform has always been the software more than the hardware. The hardware's good, but it's you know it's always overshadowed by the software there, and they wouldn't want to lose that edge. Now this last one is me just being cynical, me. But let's be honest: if Synology keep the software and the hardware together, not only have they got a customer that's buying both of them together, and therefore the price of the package costs more, but with that system, there's more of a returning customer base. Now, with the software, people might buy the software, whether it be annual license, if it did ever arrive as a software, an annual license or a per user base license, or it would last for three years and you have to renew the license. We've all used Norton in our lives. But when it's people buying a hardware software purchase, there's an element, just an element of artificial obsolescence there. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is what they do. What I'm saying is, with Synology releasing a hardware software package together, the hardware has a warranty on it, which means that person might, you know, that user, that business might come back between three to five years to refresh, because obviously the drives have a warranty as well, but also software support and um, kind of commitment to hot fixes and commitment to network and security fixes have to have a certain lifespan to them for a company to not get dogged down in 10, 20 year old solutions that are in their portfolio, taking up a substantial bracket of their R&D. Now, again, I know I'm being tremendously cynical here, but we've got to play devil's, devil's advocate. Synology must have weighed up the numbers that releasing a hardware software combined solution compared with a software solution does result in not only more money coming in into the, you know, through the door, but also a better practice of returning customer. Whereas a software solution, it's the hardware manufacturers that are getting probably the largest amount of bunts there. And a rotational payment in just software on its own would not only be smaller overall, but it has more opportunity to move on. Whereas a hardware and software combined solution has something more of a commitment long term connected to it. Again, these are all hypothetical points that I'm making today. And Let's face it, we'd all like to see a lot of these NAS brand software be released as standalone purchases to just kind of open the field in end user base. Because I think there are a lot of users that look at the cost of network attached storage. And I'm talking to you, true NAS advocates, that look at the cost of NAS and go, yes, it's turnkey, but why does it cost so dang much? And a lot of you want to go open source. You don't mind open source to the likes of true NAS, where you understand that it's community forums and the people doing it, they're getting paid, but they're not getting paid top dollar, if you know what I mean. You kind of buy into that ethos. So you want kind of the fluidity of DSM on your own hardware, and you want all those nice bells and whistles and features and not be dogged down by the hardware. But I think realistically, it's because of the five points I've talked about today, whether Synology have gone down that road or not, why I think they will never roll out DSM, a standalone software purchase, probably. 
But again, this is now at the end of 2022. Maybe in the future, I'll be proved wrong. Let's face it, I didn't see virtual DSM coming, VDSM. Maybe there'll be more to it than that. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you have. It genuinely helps me out. And know what I'm doing right ever since YouTube knackered the dislike button. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. If you need help with your setup, use the free advice section over on NAS Compares and the free community forum, Ask NAS Compares, both linked in the description. And last thing, if you're going to buy a network attached droid solution, and if, crucially, this video has actually helped you, please use the link in the description to take to Amazon if that was where you're going to shop. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and if you use that link when you get there, literally anything you buy results in a kickback coming to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares, and it helps us to continue doing what we do. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.